Well, we've seen him in Castaway, fighting in World War II, and eating boxes of chocolate. It's good that a Hanks is in the news whose name doesn't start with Chet. It's your boy Chet and I, coming straight from the Golden Globes, you are saying? Apple TV's sci-fi post-apocalyptic adventure directed by Miguel Sapochnik, the same director of Game of Thrones' Battle of the Bastards episode, is out, and I'm here to tell you all about the film's ending, what exactly happened to Earth, and many interesting facts about animals. Giraffes can survive without water longer than camels. Is that a fact? But before we begin, make sure to like and subscribe. Seriously, only 10% of you are subscribed, because here we go. Meet Finch Weinberg, our film's protagonist, a guy who spends his days scavenging the scorched wasteland that is St. Louis, Missouri. Although the exact date the story takes place is unknown, we do know the events of Finch take place roughly 15 years after a cataclysmic gamma ray from the sun pierced the Earth's ozone layer, causing the Earth to become extremely hot and unlivable. This was followed by an EMT blast which basically fried every piece of electronics on the planet. Without an ozone layer, this also means the added danger of radiation. And to make matters worse, Finch is dying. It's never explained what exactly he's dying from, but it's implied from the coughing up of blood and pills that he takes that it could be from this radiation. You might ask yourself, why is Finch all alone and are there other survivors? Well, it just so happened he was at work when the explosive gamma ray hit Earth. You see, Finch is an engineer at TAE Technology, an engineering plant he's converted into his home and seems to offer him some protection from the heat and radiation. Later in the film, we'll see what happens if he goes out into the sun unprotected. This also explains the burn scars on his back when he takes a shower. Most who survived the initial gamma ray blast did one of two things, either hid underground or scavenge and fight amongst each other for goods. Finch will later tell his robot companion that the reason he scavenges during the day when it's hottest outside is actually that it's safer. Bandits and scavengers roam at night, thus making the day the safer option. And for 15 years, Finch has cleared out hundreds of stores and buildings in the St. Louis area, marking each building with spray paint. But as you'll see from his map, he's running out of places to scavenge, meaning he's also running out of food. To make matters worse, a group of 15 dust storms are set to converge on his location for a whopping 40 days, and he barely has enough food for a week. So he has to speed up his plans of moving out west ahead of schedule. This includes finishing his work on a robot named Jeff. My name is Jeff. One of the things I liked about Jeff's creation was how we see books from the library being scanned, digitized, and uploaded into Jeff's memory. These include things like books about dogs and RVs, two things Jeff will need to know if he's to serve his main function, taking care of Finch's dog Goodyear when he passes. Yes, his sole purpose for creating this engineering marvel is so that his dog will be taken care of. Of course, only 70-ish percent of his data could be uploaded to him before they could escape this superstorm, so Jeff isn't the smartest or fully functioning robot around. Around. But back to this adorable dog, a dog Finch picked off the dead body of a young girl he chose not to save while out scavenging years ago. Instead of stopping the gunman who would later kill this child, he chose to hide and not do anything. It's one of his biggest regrets. In the movie, he calls himself a coward for not doing anything. Hunger turned men into murderers. But me made me a coward. And this leads me to what I thought was one of the biggest letdowns of the movie, Finch's character arc. They set him up as being this loner coward, but we never really see him overcome that. There isn't a big moment in the film where he gets to redeem himself. This is especially upsetting considering the film's tragic ending. After overcoming violent sand tornadoes and bandits, Finch almost makes it to his final destination, the Golden Gate Bridge. Why, of all places, is he heading there? At 15, he got a postcard from his absentee father saying he was going to be there, so he went out and spent all his money on an expensive suit to make his father proud, but he never heard from him again, so all he really has is this postcard. And perhaps this is why Finch is such a loner, it's a protective mechanism. If he never gets close to anyone, he can never get hurt like how his father hurt him. It's kind of sad that he has nowhere else to go but the place his absentee father told him to go years ago. And maybe this is why Finch has an obsession with engineering and bridges, as seen with the multiple bridge postcards. His dad was an engineer in the army who built bridges. Deep down, Finch wants to impress his father so that he'll never leave. The tragic thing is that they'll never 
ever meet. Not only that, Finch will never even make it to the place he's always wanted to visit, the Golden Gate. A few hundred miles away from their final destination, a butterfly smashes into the window of the RV, which is interesting since there's no way they could live in this heat. This indicates that they're somewhere where the radiation and heat is weak, and just like that, Finch is able to spend his final moments in the sun without a suit on for the first time in years. This is never really explained in the movie, and I'm no Neil deGrasse Tyson, but Finch earlier mentioned that the ozone layer was torn apart like a piece of Swiss cheese, so it's possible there are layers of the Earth that are protected and some that aren't. The area around San Francisco seems to be protected as evidenced by Finch's dog being able to survive. Unfortunately, Finch succumbs to his illness before getting to that bridge. Jeff creates a funeral pyre for him and even a makeshift sign. In the end, Finch's plan to create a robot to take care of his only companion was successful. Hell, he even engineered a can opener into Jeff's body so he could feed the dog. But even though the ending is quite sad, there is a glimmer of hope. While navigating the bridge, Jeff finds several posters, photos, and notes from survivors. The land surrounding the Golden Gate Bridge shows signs of life with greenery and flowing streams. This is a chance for a new beginning. So Jeff and Goodyear venture off across the bridge, symbolic of the change venturing from one chapter of their journey to the next. Even though this was the end of Finch's, it's just the beginning for them. Thanks for watching everyone, remember to like and subscribe, and check out my sci-fi playlist for more videos. And for more bad takes, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time, remember, Daddy loves you very much.